So um, my name is Deanna Cummings. Uh, I'm the executive director, one of the co-founders of Juxtaposition Arts. We're at a gala event uh, called Generative uh, Celebration and Launch Party. Sure, um, Juxta is a 18-year-old youth art education program, uh, uh, arts-based, youth-focused social enterprise, and uh, locally rooted uh, gallery and community, arts community space. So we do after-school education programs for kids year-round, where kids are learning drawing and painting and sculpting and mural making. Uh, we employ kids in part-time jobs, uh, where they work with architects and landscape architects and designers and painters um, and screen printers and, and graphic designers where they're learning skills while they're making real products and services uh, for clients. And then we also have um, a number of buildings um, that we have rehabbed over a series of years um, where buildings that were abandoned and vacant uh, are put into uh, use um, by artists and young people uh, in our community. Um, yeah, I, I, so I would say I can think of many young people over the years, it's over 18 years, so I can think of hundreds of young people who come to mind um, that came to the program um, and participated over time and really came out the other side um, as their best selves. Um, a student that occurs to me currently is a young woman by the name of Adrienne who started in our program about four years ago. Very shy. Um, she, looks at the, she would look at the ground and she would talk in a very, very soft voice anytime anybody um, asked her a question. And she started with us and um, completed a program called Visual Arts Literacy Training, where she's learning portrait and perspective, and it's a baseline sort of training in the arts. And then she got a job with us, um, and she worked on two public art projects, two murals that are right here on our campus. And next she was employed as a screen printer in our textile lab, where she's printing shirts and tote bags and various other jobs for clients and then also working in a retail shop. And then she finally went on to our graphic design studio um, where she's developing logos. Um, she's doing an annual report right now for a client. And Adrienne's going to age out of our program this year. She will be turning 22 soon. And she has found a job, a full-time job, working at the University of Minnesota in their Department of Landscape Architecture where she's doing graphic design work for them. Uh, she, a part-time job at the U. She's also working part-time at uh, the Walker Art Center. She's a docent, a gallery docent there. And she's going to be starting a full-time undergraduate program at the Minneapolis College of Art and Design. And in terms of her social development, um, she's completely blossomed. Um, She's confident, um, she holds a conversation. She's really um, got a sense of what she's made of and what she stands on and what she has to offer to the world. And um, that, start, that journey started through her connecting with artists and mentors and um, a support system here at Juxtaposition Arts. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a favorite thing. Um, yeah, you know, I guess I would say that what I really love about this work is the opportunity to engage the arts um, to do more, right? Um, our program isn't only about arts for art's sake. It's not just about art on walls or on stages. Um, it's about arts as an avenue for education, uh, for economic development, economic development for individuals and for community, um, for social development, again, for individuals, for a community, and for our organization. 
um, when we moved into the studio, we started in one studio building here on the corner of Emerson and West Broadway, and um, there were vacant buildings all around us, um, to the north, south, east, and west. And in the eight years since we've been here, there's been a hundred, uh, I'm sorry, there's been over $40 million in investment at this intersection. And across the street from us now is a coffee shop and a, a community development corporation. Next door to us is a housing developer. Uh, right down the street from us is the Minneapolis Public School Building headquarters. Further down the street is KMOJ Radio in the Northside Achievement Zone. Um, our West Broadway Coalition, which is our business association in the neighborhood, moved in a few blocks, a, a few storefronts down the way. And so the opportunity for a very grassroots, uh, small youth arts education program to move into a community and begin to um, engage with the community, to tap into what's here and what's great here and expand that um, is a real pleasure and a joy and I feel like lucky that I have the opportunity to do it. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, hmm. Anything else to say about the place? Um, I guess I would just, I would, I would say, um, as well that, uh, uh, I, I heard that I heard a, a, a quote by Rick Lowe um, out of Project Row Houses in Houston, and he said, "It's easy to come to the place; it's much harder to come to the people." And I would say that that is a um, value that Juxtaposition Arts really holds dear to our uh, work and to our hearts. Um, the work we do is about the place, but what it's really about is the people. And it's about the relationships and the connections that are made and the ability to share connections with young people um, so that those become relationships of theirs, uh, the relationships with the investors and the funding community. Um, so that they're investing in juxtaposition arts, but they're really investing in North Minneapolis and they're investing in the young people that are here. Um, so it's really about the people. And, and it, it, it is easier to come to the place than it is to come to the people, but I think in order to have true impact, life-changing impact, and, and, and a sustainable impact, um, we have to figure out how to come to the people, so. That's what I heard, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are we going to be on TV? Yes, 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 I am, yeah. Perfect job. You guys are doing great with our kids. Thank you. How's that? Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, There, I do. I do want to say something about CERNA. So uh, the, the thing I want to say about CERNA Foundation is that they are... Okay, so, so what I would want to share about the CERNA Foundation is that they are on the cutting edge of um, uh, 21st century philanthropy. Uh, their investment in juxtaposition arts is an investment from their arts uh, uh, program and their economic development program. So their thriving cultures and their strong local economies program. And this is the first time, we're the first organization that they've made an investment in that came across uh, program areas. And they were interested in supporting our work because they recognized very early on that the work we were doing here at Juxtaposition Arts was not uh, only about providing a wonderful after-school education opportunity for kids, a, a nice after-school enrichment program, that the work was about uh, economic development, that the work was about uh, social justice and um, uh, encouraging investment in organizations that are doing work that is impactful and shows great promise in low-income communities and uh, communities of color. So the CERNA Foundation um, 
has invested in, in our organization. We've received the largest grant that we've ever received from a single funder in a single grant from the Serna Foundation because they believe in the power of this work and they believe that this work, um, where it shows promise, uh, should be invested in in uh, significant ways. The, the, the terminology that the Serna Foundation uses, Judy Lee um, uses, is that the investment needs to be right-sized. And um, the recent grant we've received from the Serna Foundation, which is $550,000, um, was the Serna Foundation's commitment to right-size their investment in asset-based, youth-focused, uh, creative economic development uh, work. And that should, that, that should be applauded. And, and I hope more funders uh, take a page from Serna's book and recognize um, that funding work of potential funding innovation um, that's on the ground and close to the people is what we need to do to really solve our biggest challenges in, in, in communities like our community all around the, the country and the world. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so, so yeah, we, we are, our work is, is about providing young people pathways to make a living and a life in the arts. So we're training young people in graphic design and screen printing and contemporary arts and public art and landscape architecture and architecture and so on. And many of the young people that work in our program, all of, all of the young people that come through our program are working with professional artists and designers that are also paid staff members. Um, most of our artists and, and uh, our, our artist teachers or design teachers are people of color. So I think one of the unique elements of our work is that we recognize that to make that idea tangible, young people need to see examples of uh, folks who have made that work in their lives. And they need to see examples of people that look like them and that come from backgrounds like they come from and experiences they come from. Um, and some of the young people will go on to be professional artists and designers and architects and landscape architects and so on. A lot of the young people that come through our program won't though. They, but all of them will come out um, better um, for the experience of participating here because participating in the, participating in the arts in a hands-on way is teaching young people about, is to giving them technical skills, right? They're learning to make things. They're learning how to translate something into real life from an idea. I think of it as like alchemy. They're practicing alchemy over and over and over again. They're learning to work alone. They're learning to work with a team. They're learning how to take input from a community of people and then figure out what the end looks like that's a, a, a blend of all of the ideas from the team members that they work with to the community members that were engaged in in the conversation about a mural or whatever work especially in terms of public art they're practicing public speaking skills they have to get up and talk about their work in front of a, a their 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 group as well as in front of the entire organization they're learning to network and be in a space where people are dressed up and holding cocktails and how to work a room. They're practicing this. So everything we're doing here is practice for real life. And some young people will use that for a career in the arts and other young people will use that to become active, engaged uh, community members. Um, and, and each, each of those are, are valuable and valid, and we don't hold one up above the other. They're all valuable and valid, and, and, and that's what the work is all about. So, so I, think this, I, I think that's another piece that's really special about what we do here is that we try to help young people understand that this is an investment in yourself, and it doesn't mean that you, we're, we're steering you toward this particular path. What do you want to do with your life? And then how can you take this sort of toolkit, this backpack, that's the way I think of it, this backpack with these tools that you keep adding to 
and use that in service of where you're trying to go. Do you want to go to college? Do you want to start your own business? Do you want an internship at a design firm? Do you want a job um, as a professional? Do you want to do? Do you want to go on to be a professional artist? Okay, how can we use these tools that you gained in service of that? So, so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. So you guys have me warmed up now for when I speak later, which is good because I kind of needed to warm up because I was going to be nervous. Yep. I think I signed the master release.